here is my current list of complaints about being pregnant. It's quite a long list, but it's not all bad. So first of all, let's do the good things about being pregnant. I've got a really good looking bump. Okay, we've come downstairs for the bump shot because I don't think you can truly appreciate the scale upstairs. Try to point out t-shirts, no longer anywhere near my jeans. This is the biggest size that Primark does. So you ready for this? Here we go. Bump, massive bump. Remember, I still have another two months to go. I am very, very large. It, it, it is, it's a good looking bump. Um, people look at my bum and they get really broody, whether it's other teachers that have already had kids or six warmers. And what happens, especially with the six warmers, is that I stop them and I explain my current list of complaints to them. And then they are put of having children forever and ever and ever and ever. And then the other good thing about having built being pregnant is that I am going to have a baby, which is a good thing. And remember. <laughs> We did this on purpose, okay? It's not like, you know, we had an accident. We tried really, really hard, like loads of surgeries this last year, loads and loads of needles, and loads and loads of times went to the doctors. We did this on purpose, okay? However, apart from the two good things about being pregnant, good looking mum when we get a baby at the end, this is my current list of complaints. So if you were thinking, oh miss, your mum looks so lovely, because it does look like a lovely bump, I wish I had a baby, which I hear so much in the corridor. You do not. I'm going to go through for you my current list of complaints, which will put you off having kids forever. So, what's at the top? Clothes. None of my clothes fit me. Like, none of my clothes fit me. And I have to go shopping to buy new clothes, which brings me to my second point, shopping. You know when you walk into a shop, and it's a big shop, and there's loads and loads of sections, and you're trying to find the section that you want. Imagine, like, the jewellery section. Cut that in half, and that's the size of the maternity clothes section, okay? So you walk into, like, a massive three-storey H&M, and you've got a choice of three T-shirts. And that's all you're allowed to wear for, like, nine months. Which is why, like, I mean, this just general random Primark t-shirt in the largest size that they do, and it still doesn't fit me. Now, I know this is a trivial thing, but I like shopping. I do. I like going shopping. And I can't do it anymore. Um, and it makes me sad. What's next on my list? Sleeping. I had to divide this into two sections. Volume. I need at least... 10 hours sleep a night so I'm in bed by falling asleep on the sofa by like 7 o'clock in bed definitely full on asleep by 8 and up again at 6 because that's what time the toddler gets up um, and I'm not talking about restless sleep here I'm not talking about lying in bed watching Netflix I am proper proper asleep and then during the middle of the day I have to have a nap we're talking at least 2 hours and if I don't get my two hour nap in the middle of the day, I literally can't function in the afternoon. And even with my two hour nap in the middle of the day, I'm asleep on the sofa by seven o'clock. I need a ridiculous amount of sleep. It is really, really interfering with the actual daily function of my life due to how much sleep I need. Side. I'm only allowed to sleep on one side. That is my left hand side. That is it. That is all the sleep positions that are allowed when you're pregnant sleeping on your left hand side. You're not allowed to roll over. Well, you can't roll over because it's horrendously comfortable. Lying on your back hurts. Lying on your side you can't do because there's an artery that feeds your uterus lying on your right hand side. Um, and if you lie on your right hand side, then you're going to cut off blood supply to the baby, which is a bad thing. Um, so you have to lie on your, <laughs> you have to lie on your left hand side. And even if you wanted to change positions, that actual effort or changing positions in bed is so traumatic. Sometimes if I want to shift slightly, I'm gonna be like, this is really uncomfortable, this really, really hurts, but is lying here in pain comparable to the effort of changing position in bed? And sometimes I just decide changing position is far too much effort because not only do you have to like move yourself, but you have to move a massive bump as well, and I'm not explaining this very well, well, but it's hard to roll over when you're so unevenly spread out, okay? 
It's great for teaching physics because my centre of mass is now completely shifted from a normal person. Heartburn. <laughs> oh my god, it hurts so much. Oh my lord, it hurts so much. Um, so at the top of your stomach there is a sphincter, a muscle which holds it shut tightly. Um, and when you're pregnant your muscles tend to relax and just like relax. So instead of the sphincter at the top of my um, stomach being shut tightly, it's kind of like open loosely. It's like um, when you take a bottle of water and turn it on its side, if it's shut tightly it's okay because it's shut tightly. But if you loosened the cap, it would all start to leak out. And that's what happens in the middle of the night when I'm lying down. The contents of my stomach starts to leak out and it starts to leak up here and it burns. It literally burns from the inside out. And then occasionally, it's not just the stomach acid that leaks out. If he gives a really, really good kick with absolutely no warning at all, and I do mean absolutely no warning at all, I'm sick. Um, and you know how like when you're sick normally you get that funny taste in your mouth, you can rush to the bathroom. This is, with no warning at all, my mouth is full of sick. Which is uh, copable, I can cope with it. Cap copable, capable. If I'm standing upright and I'm awake, however if I'm asleep, and then suddenly my mouth is full of sick. What happens is I wake up in a panic because I'm choking on my own sick. This happens on a fairly regular basis. Now I'm only seven months pregnant. I have another two months to go. I'm not due until July, which means after you have finished your exams, I'm still going to be pregnant and even bigger. And the heartburn is going to be even worse. Last time I was pregnant, we had to like go and buy shed loads of pillows and erect this really elaborate pillow seat in bed so I could try and sleep upright without it killing my neck. It was awful. It was really not good. Sickness. I've covered that. The choking on my own sick in the middle of the night. Walking. It really hurts. It hurts. Everything hurts. My back hurts. My leg hurts. Um, and it's not like putting pressure on my leg. It's the the joint in there, so this movement here of my leg in my hip joint, the actual movement of my leg really really hurt. So I can put pressure on fine, um, things I can't do very well, move my leg, lift my feet. Sometimes, if I've been sitting on the sofa for quite a long time, I'll stand up, that take me a while, my husband will have to help me, and then I'll be stuck. I'll literally just be stuck in place. And I'll be kind of like going, I, need, I can't move. I literally cannot lift my feet off the floor because it hurts too much. It's just ridiculous. Eating. Um, because my stomach is squashed, because there's a baby in there, you've just, I just showed you the bump picture, it's a big baby. I can't eat very much at a time. But because I can't eat very much at a time, it means I'm hungry all the time. So basically I have to have a meal every two hours but that meal has to be about a third of the size of a normal meal so I like constantly have to have snacks on me I constantly have to be eating but I can't eat very much at a time because it makes me feel sick what are you up to now weeing oh my lord oh my lord so because my bladder is being squashed by a tiny person um, I have to wee all the time like literally every half an hour I have to go and wee and then you're kind of like you know to a point where you're literally busting for a wee and it's so painful and you have to rush to the toilet and then I get to the toilet and I'm sitting on the toilet going shh and that's it and I'm sitting there going what the that was it I was in that much pain I had to run to the toilet and there's this teeny piddly little amount of wee come out I get quite angry about this it is highly annoying having to go to the toilet so frequently and basically having nothing come out because my bladder is now the size of a pea. What's next? Talking. So I'm making a video on the formula of common irons and one of the things that I've edited out of this video is the fact that one minute 30 in I'm having a break <sighs> to catch my breath. I'm like 
when you see someone just starting running and they think, yeah, I'm just gonna go out and do a 5K. And I just can't, I just can't talk for long periods of time. So I'm having a break to just sit here and catch my breath after a minute and a half's worth of talking. It's great being pregnant. My back, it hurts. It really hurts. My hips, they hurt. They really, really hurt. Kicking. He is a very active baby. Very, very active baby. Um, and it's not just like kicking my tummy, it's kicking everything. So my bladder, sharp kick to the bladder, really hurts. Sharp kick to the stomach and my lungs, really hurts. A sharp kick to the cervix, oh my lord, the pain is basically undescribable. And he doesn't just do it once. Repeatedly kicking me in the cervix over and over and over again. Memory. Look, I had to write a list because my brain has turned to mush. Literally, my brain has turned to mush. I can't remember stuff like I used to. It's appalling. And it also means I'm doing complete failure to adults. I went to the shops yesterday and just bought a load of random rubbish. And then my husband got home from work and he's kind of like, what? We don't have anything in for dinner, but we've got shed loads of ice cream. Like, loads of ice cream. We have nothing, we don't have any milk, but we have loads and loads of pita breads. Like, I just, I'm just completely failing on being a grown up at the moment. Um, so, get a licking bump, gonna get a baby out of it, but I have to go through all of this to get there.